welcome back to my kitchen. So we're gonna do another cooking video. Um, this time I've done some of the prep in advance because I figure you don't need like a million videos of me um, chopping garlic and onions and veggies. So we'll just kind of take it through step by step. We are going to do a pasta, um, a pasta sauce with fresh meatballs and spaghetti squash. I know kind of a pasta theme-ish, um, but today is gonna be a little bit different um, in terms of the fact that we are using spaghetti squash instead of a pasta base um, and we're also going to be making our meatballs but we're going to start off with that sauce going and we'll just get that right right on okay so you can see here i have all of everything that i need for my sauce set out and we'll just go through each thing as we use them but because we have to bake the spaghetti squash and we're going to also bake the meatballs i'm going to get my oven started preheating and we're going to kick that up to 400 which i'm going to hate myself for later being that we are in Arizona and it's gonna get hot. All right, so we're gonna start with just a little sauce pot here. I'm gonna turn it on about medium high. And I'm gonna take some butter, about a tablespoon of butter, just drop that in, and we're gonna let that start to melt. Now I've got a couple of things going on here. I have crushed tomatoes and tomato sauce. So we're not making from fresh this time. We're gonna save ourselves a little bit of time, make it a little bit easy. This would be something that you could easily dump into a crock pot at the beginning of the day. And then when you get home, the house smells amazing. You have this gorgeous sauce that's ready. You could also, if you're doing this in the crock pot, you could throw in um, the meatballs into the sauce in the crock pot, and there you have a one dish meal. My crock pot is currently at my parents' house back in Oregon, so I am sadly out of a crock pot and can't demo that video for you yet. All right, so we've got our butter in here melting uh, because we're gonna saute some garlic and onions to start this off. And that baby is almost, almost melted. We've got a good enough heat here that I'm just gonna take these pre-chopped onions, just a nice little dice on them, nothing too big, nothing too small. No need to go crazy. We're just gonna drop them in here. All right. And so with these onions, we just wanna cook them a little bit, get them so that they're translucent. We're gonna be releasing those flavors. Same that we did um, with our fresh pasta sauce. So a lot of these components are gonna be very similar. Um, except for we're gonna be using some fresh oregano this time, which is gonna be a really nice pop of flavor. Going through our nutritional components, we've got our onions, like we talked about last time, they're gonna have um, a lot of really great heart health because of the sulfurs and the sulfur components in them. It's gonna help with um, regulating blood pressure and blood sugar, at least helping the mechanisms that do that. We have our tomatoes, and now these are gonna be cooked tomatoes, so we're gonna get lycopene, which is that antioxidant that we talked about. Again, also very important for heart health. So this is like a very kind of trying to make a heart healthy sauce. Now, I know using butter goes against the conventional heart healthy wisdom, but as we know, fat is not our enemy. And we use about a tablespoon and it's a really nice organic grass fed butter. So it's gonna be healthy fats. Everything's gonna be really, really nice to use. So now that we've got a little bit of a sizzle going with our onions. I'm gonna take my garlic. Now I'm gonna put, now there's three cloves of garlic in here just minced. So very, very, very finely diced up. And I'm just gonna put about half of that in here. So I'm gonna put some in the meatballs. Yes, garlic directly in the meatballs. It's gonna be fantastic. So we're gonna get this going. And you can just hear that little simmer on it. That's gonna start releasing all of those wonderful flavors. And now because the garlic was chopped, it's the enzymes have had the time to release that allicin component, which is going to be your antimicrobial, as well as providing some prebiotic fiber, which is gonna be good for the buggies in your gut. Now that we've got that going, we're gonna add just a nice big 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I want leftovers of this. <laughs> So we're gonna make a lot of sauce here. All right, you can get all that yummy goodness out of there. And then just to intensify it a little bit, we're gonna add some tomato sauce. 
So that's just going to add a little bit of a thicker component to it and concentrate the tomato flavor. I give that a little stir. I'm going to turn up the heat up just a little bit, just for a moment. Now we're going to add our spices. And I'm going to measure it for you this time. I hate measuring, it's really not my thing, um, but I'm going to try. So I'm going to do a little bit. So we're going to start off with just about a teaspoon of salt. Well, yeah. So the tomatoes are going to bubble and it's going to spit tomatoes at me. So, a little bit of a teaspoon of salt. Give a little stir. Help it out there. It's almost like watching lava bubble and boil on your stove. It's kind of cool. Um, and then with the pepper, I have it in a grinder, so it's going to be a little bit harder to measure. But we're going to go for about a half teaspoon here. And we're going to go up really high. And we're going to turn that heat down because I am getting bombarded by tomatoes. Hence, I'm wearing a red shirt today because <laughs> I knew we were going to have tomato um, sauce spitting everywhere. Give that a quick little stir. Perfect. All right. So we have our dried basil. And because dried herbs are not as concentrated as fresh, we're going to go we're gonna go for a full tablespoon. I'm gonna measure it out using teaspoons though, because that's the measurement that can, that's the measuring spoon that can actually get into the jar. All right, so we got basil in there, we've got our exploding tomato sauce. I can give a little stir here. And we're really gonna turn that down now because it has proven that it's at the heat that we need. So once it kind of gets to that bubbling stage, we really want to turn it down so that it simmers. Okay, we're going to take a bay leaf. We're going to take that bay leaf. That's a little baby one. So I'm going to drop two in there. And we have our lovely dried rosemary. I'm just going to crumble off some rosemary here. Kind of fun to do it this way. Just crumble it straight into there. And we're going to call that about two teaspoons, give or take. It's always hard to measure when you're just going straight from the leaf. All right, so at my apartment complex, we have an adorable, oh, that's just my oven saying that it's ready. We have an adorable little community garden, and there's some fresh oregano there. So I picked some little oregano sprigs. That's what they look like. They're so cute. <laughs> and we are just going to take one of these. I'll hold it at the top and just slide. Sorry, you didn't see that. Just kind of slide on down. I'll do another one for you. I'm just going to sprinkle that in. Okay, so this guy, I'm going to take it, hold it at the top, and then, oh, of course, it breaks off when I bring it up close. And now as I'm just sliding my hand down and the leaves are coming off, real easy way, and then just kind of give it a little tear as you put it in. And we have fresh oregano in our pasta sauce. And give that a little stir. And then we're going to let that simmer. Just going to cover that and let that be a happy little sauce. Okay, so now we're over here, other side of my kitchen, and we have our spaghetti squash. Now, normally spaghetti squash are a lot bigger than this, but I saw this guy at the farmer's market and he was just so cute and tiny and perfect if you're cooking for one or two. Obviously this may not feed four people, but one or two, you're good to go. Um, and so we're gonna start by cutting it open. Now with spaghetti squash, you noticed it's pretty rolly, so that's gonna make it harder to cut. So what we're going to do, so we don't wanna just cut it straight in half first, because they can be a little bit hard to cut. We're gonna stabilize that, and we are just going to chop an end off. So once we chop that end off, we can stand our spaghetti squash up and then we have a much safer surface. You can see that it is kind of difficult because it is a squash. <laughs> it's going to take some work. All right, so there's your spaghetti squash. It does have some seeds that we need to take care of. I'm going to grab a bowl over here and a spoon. thought I had everything I needed, but not quite. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just going to scrape all these seeds out. 
Um, and now spaghetti squash. Uh, spaghetti squash is a great pasta kind of substitute for people who are avoiding grains or gluten, wheat, any and all of the above. Spaghetti squash is really gonna be kind of a good substitute. I will say it is not a replacement. It does not have that delicious, chewy pasta texture that we all know and love. But it can be a pretty healthy option. We're just gonna really do a little scrape here. We wanna try to really get these clean so that we can get all of the seeds and gunk out. Now, because this came from a farmer's market and it's all organic, I could probably save these seeds and grow my own spaghetti squash. I may do that. I haven't decided yet. Um, but these guys are full of fiber, um, like most squashes. They can be a little bit higher carb. So if you are looking to watch your carbs, this is kind of a, uh, you know, eat sometimes, not eat all the time. But again, for those who are looking to avoid grains, looking to avoid gluten, this is gonna be a really fantastic option for you. And especially if you don't like zucchini. I know zucchini noodles are huge. I personally have never really liked zucchini noodles. Um, so spaghetti squash, great alternative. A little bit higher carb than zucchini, but again, you still are gonna be getting that whether you go with a traditional pasta or if you go with a veggie pasta. Um, spaghetti squash also have good amounts of vitamin C in them and your B vitamins. So you're gonna have niacin, which is vitamin B3. You're also gonna have vitamin B6 and B5 in these guys. So it's gonna be a good little booster. And now B vitamins, um, they are important in mood and energy. So that's why you see like some of those natural like energy shots, they have a ton of B12 in them or just B vitamins in general. Um, Cause B vitamins help. They can open up some of your blood vessels and just get that uh, vitamin B5 in particular opens up, or no, vitamin B3 opens up some of the blood vessels, which is why you can get that um, nice and flush. If you take one of those energy drinks and all of a sudden your like, face gets really hot and red and prickly, that's a nice and flush, which just means that you have a lot of vitamin B3 in your system and your body is responding to it. All right, so we've got my spaghetti squash here. I'm gonna take a little bit of coconut oil and I'm just gonna use my fingers because it's just me and I washed my hands. I'm just gonna dribble a little coconut oil, maybe like a teaspoon or two on each side. I'm just gonna put it all over here. So yeah, just giving these guys a little bit of love with the coconut oil. Okay, so they've got that love with the coconut oil. And then we're gonna grab some of our fresh oregano. I'm gonna grab some salt. I'm gonna open this guy back up. There we go. And we're just gonna do the spaghetti squash real simple. We don't need it to be anything, you know, super seasoned, but you do wanna season it a little bit or else it's gonna be really bland. So we're just gonna do a little bit of salt and pepper and some of that fresh oregano. Now I've got some tissues here off screen, just gonna clean up my hands a little bit. So take the pepper, quick little grind, and then fresh oregano. I'm gonna do half and half. So I'm just gonna sprinkle these guys right in there. And then this other half, <laughs> which I'm destroying, is gonna come over on this one. I've just been obsessed with this oregano. I've actually been putting sprigs of it in water and then having like an herbed water to drink throughout the day. Um, there's also peppermint at my community garden, so I've been using that as well. All right, so we're gonna take these and I'm gonna put them in this pan that I have here, a little glass pan, and I'm gonna turn them upside down. So we're turning them upside down so that the moisture from the spaghetti squash doesn't pool in it, making them super soggy. All right, so we got those ready to go. We're gonna set them aside. And actually, we are going to, now we're just gonna set them aside. So they're gonna take probably about 30-ish minutes to cook. 
So I want to make sure that my meatball mixture is at least ready before I throw these in because the meatballs are going to take about 20 minutes. I'm going to take a quick break, wash my hands, and I'll be right back. All right, so we are done with the set change and we're going to start on our meatballs. So we have in a bowl here, we have ground beef and ground turkey. So this is about two thirds of a pound of ground beef. Um, this is the last leftovers from the pasta sauce that we made last time and about a pound of ground turkey. I am blending the two because we're gonna get a better, richer flavor. Um, and then with the turkey, sadly, it is not from the farmer's market and it's not from a local turkey farmer. I went with the best turkey that I could find and I did find an organic free range turkey, um, free range ground turkey, but it definitely took some hunting and that, that's one of the things is you do have to go with the best option that's available to you within your price range, you know. Some weeks it's not gonna be in the budget and some weeks it is and you just have to make that decision for yourself. So I'm gonna do a quick little blending of the two meats here. Now we know from that, from the last time we talked about grass-fed beef, we are gonna have a really good balance of omega-3s and omega-6s, so more omega-3s and omega-6s. Um, full complement of protein, so these are both a complete protein, meaning we get all of the amino acids that we need from it. Okay, so we don't want to overwork this mixture. Um, that's the big thing with meatballs. If you overwork them, it gets tough. So we're going to start with these lovely eggs over here. Now these did come from the farmer's market, so I'm super excited about these. I'm just going to grab this guy. I know I'm a heathen going from the center rather than starting at the edge. But this guy has like all the pretty spots on it, so I want to use him first. The egg is going to act as a binder. Now a lot of meatball recipes will have breadcrumbs, almond flour, something like that in it, and the egg, but we're gonna make it without. Because um, again, this meal is gonna be gluten-free and grain-free. So we're just gonna plop that egg in there. We're gonna take the rest of our garlic, add that. Try to scrape as all the garlicky goodness out. We're gonna grab our little measuring spoons here again. And we're gonna add the salt. And I let it overspill there, so we're going to go a little bit more than a teaspoon. Um, we're also going to add a little pile of pepper in here. Get a little hand workout doing this. Make the wrist stronger for typing. There we go. And we're going to use the basil. This time we're just going to do a couple of teaspoons of basil. We don't need as much here because we're already gonna have a lot of good flavor from that meat. All right, rosemary. Again, we're just gonna grind, hand grind it in. So I'm just taking these leaves, rubbing it between my fingers. That's gonna release a lot of the flavors and it's gonna break it up a little bit so that we're not just you know chewing on sticks and leaves as my dad would say. All right, so we got some rosemary in there, maybe like a teaspoon or two. We don't want it to be too overpowering and rosemary can be pretty strong. And then we're gonna take that lovely fresh oregano that we've been playing with this whole time. It's really kind of the star <laughs> of this meal flavor wise. And we are just gonna tear those little bitty leaves in there. And we're gonna use our last few sprigs with this. We are just gonna oregano this up. I just love the scent of it. It's so herbaceous and refreshing. Just makes the whole kitchen smell really good and really relaxing. It's almost like, you know, being transported to a little Italian grandmother's kitchen where she has, you know, all of her fresh herbs and all that great stuff. Isn't that the dream though? <laughs> Don't we all wish we had a little Italian grandmother who taught us how to make pasta from scratch? I know I do. <laughs> Still hoping for it. All right. So we've got all that in here and I'm just going to dive in with my hands because I like doing things with my hands and they're going to get dirty when we're forming the meatballs anyway. So yep, this is going to get nice and gooey. And again, we are just mixing this to make sure that it's evenly mixed and evenly distributed. We're not trying to do a ton of mixing here. 
And so this is something that if you want your meatballs to hold together a little bit better, um, if you want the extra bulk from it, you can always add breadcrumbs. You can always use um, almond flour is another one. I prefer the texture without the breadcrumbs and without all of that, but it's up to you. You know, make this your own, make this something that works for you. All right, so that's probably mixed enough. You can see we've got a pretty good distribution there. And so we are going to toss our spaghetti squash in the oven now and then get on to making some meatballs. I gotta figure out how to pause this thing here. <laughs> okay, spaghetti squash is in the oven and so that'll probably take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook. It is a smaller squash so it's not gonna take as long. So we're gonna start making our meatballs. So we're just gonna take a little bit of meat, pick the size of meatball you want. I think meatballs should be generously sized. So they're probably about like one inch. And then you're just gonna plop it in. So this pan, I've prepared it by um, just pouring some coconut oil in, um, but you definitely wanna have your pan greased so that your little meatball babies don't stick. And I'm gonna space them out just a little bit. You don't have to put too much space in between them because unlike cookies, they're really not gonna grow. We just wanna make sure that there is even heating and air circulation so we don't want them like too stuck together. And then you're just gonna continue as so. And if I knew a lot about video editing, which I will learn, I promise, and so you won't have to sit through these super, super long videos, um, I would just do like that cool little like snap thing and this would be filled with meatballs. Um, but I don't know a lot about editing. I am learning and it's going to be a fun process. So I'm really excited to see these videos get better and to hopefully help you get a little bit more out of them. All right. So we're just going to keep going like that until we have all of our meat is gone. And then you pop these babies in the oven and they're probably going to be in the oven for about 15, 20 minutes. So hopefully if I have my timing right, my sauce will be fully simmered. Because that sauce, that can simmer just as long as you want it to. Um, and that's just gonna be more time for the flavors to develop. And remember, we wanna taste as we go. I've already taken my first taste and it tasted pretty good. Might need a little bit more salt, but we'll see. Um, and that is the thing, you know, taste your food as you go. Obviously, don't taste the raw meatballs. Um, <laughs> eating raw meat, not so good. Now there are certain circumstances in which you can eat raw meat, but it has to be very specially prepared. And I don't trust that I have <laughs> achieved that level of antibacterial cleanliness to eat um, any raw meat in my kitchen here. So we're gonna stick with the cooked meatballs. And I'm just kinda making a little bit more room because I have a little bit more mixture left a little bit more pan space and try to squish them in here. Now these meatballs are a little bit bigger so they may take a little bit longer to cook. So that is something to think about. Um, you can always make them smaller for less cooking time. But you always want to make sure that they are fully cooked. All right. Just one more little meatball. They can figure out how to squeeze it in, right? and play a little meatball Tetris here. I know I'm ruining all of like these nice little pretty perfect lines that I have. It's only driving me a little bit nuts. <laughs> but I would rather have it all done at once and not just have some random extra meatball hanging out. Okay, a little messy at the end, but there we go. So all of this is gonna go into the oven about 20 to 30 minutes and then we will have a lovely um, spaghetti squash meatball with a homemade sauce. All right, we are back. Everything is nice and cooked. So the spaghetti squash, how I tested it was I just took a fork and I used that cut end and I made sure that this fork went in <laughs> nice and easy. Notice how smooth that slides in. Usually means the squash is about done. So it's still pretty hot. So I'm gonna use <laughs> I'm gonna show off how clumsy I am here, but look at this gorgeousness. It's got just a little bit of browning on it, and we have those nice herbs in. So to make it kind of that spaghetti 
look that everybody, that the squash is famous for. I'm just gonna hold it as best I can, which is not super well. I'm gonna have to ditch that and just use my fingers here. And I'm just gonna scrape it. And I'm using a fork so that we get those really nice, stringy spaghetti bits. So you can kind of see what's going on there is that we're getting that nice little bit of spaghetti going. Now it is, again, like I said, still pretty hot, so I'm being really careful with my fingers. I just need something to hold it while I scrape the insides to create our spaghetti texture. And now you can leave this in the squash if you want to use the squash like a little boat. I'm going to do that because I think it looks kind of cute and I like pretty food. <laughs> Um, but you can also just scrape a bunch of the insides out into a large bowl and then serve it more like a, like a traditional pasta. All right, I'm just gonna kinda toss this around. It is a little bit moister than I would like, but that's okay. Um, there's gonna be so much flavor that I'm not even gonna notice it. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty well scraped out. You notice we have our nice little spaghetti bowl here now with those delicious herbs and now my meatballs how I checked them was I just took a fork and cut one in half to make sure that it was cooked all the way through and they are and so I'm just gonna grab a few look at these gorgeous babies here I'm gonna bring one up close and you notice it might have like some brownish stuff clinging to it that's just fat so it's totally fine looks a little bit weird but it's normal just gonna make a nice little pile of spaghetti and meatballs here. And then I've got my sauce, which I left to simmer. I didn't end up adding any seasonings. I tasted it a few times and it was just uh, so good. That fresh oregano just pops right through. And I'm just gonna take a little scoop of sauce and drizzle it right on over. There we go. Oh, that's All right. So then I'm going to use again that pesto that I've been using from Hartquist Hollow Farms here. I'm going to add some of that because everything is better with pesto. Oh, it just smells so good. I'm just going to take a little bit of that beautiful green pesto, plop it right on there. It's supposed to go on top, but it didn't quite work out that way. All right, and there, my friends, spaghetti squash, meatballs, and fresh pasta sauce. So we've got our whole little meal here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a little bit more about how to take a traditional comfort meal and make it a little bit healthier and adjust it to some different diets. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.